Uh, I'm Anthony Browness. About me, I'm a eight-year veteran of the U.S. Army. Was a chemical operations specialist. I'm a computer science major at SLIC. Um, I'm the lead quality assurance engineer at Fuse Network. Um, I've designed and implemented a fully functioning API test suite with about 5,600 tests and rising. Um, PHP, MySQL, uh, and the resident wiki guru, and uh, founder of the hacker space up in Salt Lake City. Uh, we're always looking for more members, so check us out. Also check out the workshop next door. Um, and I'm starting a hackers club at Slate, so if anybody attends, please uh, hit me up. Some simple truths. Um, I'm in the industry for one year. I'm still learning, probably much like everybody else. Uh, there's always a better way, so criticism's okay, but be gentle. Um, in fact, <laughs> this project was literally within my first three months of like touching computer science. So um, some stuff might be really stupid on here. <laughs> and uh, I, I, um, I, I look back at it now and I'm like, yeah, I could have done things a lot better. But the, the, uh, the, the core concept is still really good. It's, it, um, so that's why I'm presenting it the way it is. I could have modified it and you know, used all my amazing PHP skills I have now to do something great. But um, I, I like the way it is, and I like what I, what I came up with with very little knowledge. Um, uh, so yeah, the, my experience is my first large open source project. Um, exercise in problem solving. Um, using a huge range of open source projects and utilities, just like anything that's out there. Um, just use it to your advantage, and it's all there, and it's all really easy to use. Um, there's problems and there's solutions, and there's always an open source solution, um, even if you haven't made it yet. So, that, that means if you make a solution, you should probably put it out there for people. Um, what is AID? AID is the Advanced Intrusion Detection Environment. Who here has actually used AID? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, anybody use any sort of FIM? Voluntary monitor? Okay. Uh, it doesn't detect intruders and it isn't very advanced. I don't know why they called it that, but I guess they can't just call it environment. Uh, it's on Linux distributions, license under GPL. What does it do? It, it's a file integrity monitor. It basically creates a snapshot from the regex rules specified in your config file. Um, and then it uses uh, MDAs or message digest algorithms to create a database of your file system structure and contents. So um, then, then you can take take this database as a, as an old original database, an initial database, and compare it with your newest database that you've made, and uh, and it'll tell you exactly where all the changes in your file system have been made. Uh, MDAs are these pretty much hashes right here. Uh, Why use a FIM? Uh, it's really helpful for investigations if, uh, if you're in the PCI industry like I am. Or uh, if, you, if, if you get compromised, uh, the bank card companies are gonna come after you wanna know exactly what happened now. And uh, they won't let you off the hook until they know. So uh, this is very useful in investigations. Uh, peace of mind, if you, if you, you don't have to be in the payment card industry to use a FIM. If you have stuff that you care about, and uh, you want to know it's in it, like the, the way it was before it was broken, and uh, how somebody ended up breaking it. It might be a good idea to, to use a fin. Uh, you might use one because they tell you to. That's why I started using one. Um, I'm sure, you can think of more. Uh, there's tons of fins out there. Uh, Same, Apex, Data Sentinel. There is like hundreds of them. Uh, why eight specifically? Um, there's pros and cons, and don't go for those. Uh, the uh, pros are no central monitoring. It's a pro and a con. Um, the, if, if you have a central monitoring built into your FIM, and you're already using some sort of central monitoring, that's something else that you have to try to get to play nice. So either try, try, to, try to make them work together, or you can build it up the way you want it. So. You know, if you don't have any central monitoring already, it might be a good idea to choose a FIM that has some sort of central monitoring. Um, I think Samin or whatever has a pretty good one. Uh, 
So uh, we, we use Nagios, and I didn't want to deal with um, some, some monitoring that was already there or have one more thing I have to check every day. Um, so, so I just decided to, to go with, one, with uh, hey, it's, it's simple, it's lightweight, um, it does a single job well, it does like exactly what a fin is supposed to do very well. Uh, it's got a right, wide range of MDAs, it supports many file attributes. So you can see like file type, inode, permissions, like A time, uh, any of these things that you want to track on your files, you, you can know about them. Um, and gzip is built in. Uh, gzip's important because these database files sit around and they do nothing until you need them. And they're pretty big. So uh, having them zipped up and you know packaged is nice. Uh, cons, yeah, no central monitoring, uh, no built-in alerting, little automation. They are cron capable, but you, you would still need to go in there and, and look at results and stuff. Um, they're slow, um, but that's just the nature of bins, and they are easily defeated. Um, so TCI DSS, has anybody done TCI DSS in here? Okay. Uh, you know it sucks, right? <laughs> um, so there's tons of standards. The actual PCI requirement that's very specific about it is 10.5.5. Uh, and it's basically like really, uh, really big on making sure that people aren't messing with your audit logs or you know what's happening to your audit logs. But I'm like, why, if you're going to go through all the trouble of setting up a FIM, you're just going to watch one audit log or one audit log file or something, you know, like our directory. Uh, yeah, so, so why not? Why not use it everywhere? So why not? We, why don't we turn a FIM into an advanced intrusion detection environment? Because we can do that. Right, uh, so let's make eight awesome. Um, so my first goal uh, was central monitoring. Uh, monitoring. I wanted to make it work with Nagios. Um, so some of the tools I used was uh, Truit. Does it, everybody know what Truit is? Uh, does anybody not? Does anybody want me to go over it? Just raise your hand if you want. Okay. Uh, anybody? Okay. Uh, iNotify. Um, iNotify is uh, basically you can you can have it sit there and watch a directory and um, and then and then take some sort of action depending on what happens. Um, so I, I I use it because I have a Truted account um, on my central server, and then I have my eight files get sent into the Truted account, and I have iNotify watching the Truted. Well, I guess it's directory on the account. Um, the Truted directory. Right, so when something comes into the directory, it says, okay, I'm gonna pick it up and do something with it. That's pretty much it. Um, Nagios plugins. Uh, does anybody know, not know what Nagios is? Okay. Um, Nagios is awesome. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure there's other solutions out there for that. Let me see. Alright, Nagios, uh, basically allows you to monitor all sorts of processes and things on, on all your systems. So if you have multiple systems, this is just a simple little setup I've, I've uh, made, but we at work we have, uh, I think like 20 systems and we monitor them all through um, Nagios. Mm. So basically my setup here is I have, a, I have a, a Nagios core, which is the machine that's actually running this Nagios and reporting to me. I have a, um, a boss, which basically um, receives my um, a database files and uh, does stuff with them. We'll go into it a little more later. And then I have my minions, which are the one like they're just the workers. That'd be like a web machine or a database machine that's saying like, oh, here's my here's my file. Here's what I'm doing with it. Uh, keep in mind, originally with Aid, what you have to do is keep every one of those machines has to sit there and hold the file. And then on every one of those machines, you have to go back and say, okay, hey, check this file with this new file every single time. And you have to be there and you have to monitor it. So that sucks when you have 20 machines. So that's why I set it up like this. Um, so there's Nagios, and, and uh, it's got a couple uh, plugins. One is uh, NRPE, it's a Nagios remote plugin executor. 
Um, basically, it allows Nagios to say, hey, machine over there, give me some sort of information, right? Uh, and then at CA, which is a Nagios service check acceptor, which just says, uh, I, I'm looking, I'm waiting for you to send me some stuff, and, and I'll do stuff when it gets here. And then um, you can have the, the host machine or your, your other machine send into the Nagios machine like, hey, I just did this thing. So this is awesome for stuff like crons. Like, have you ever had a cron drop? Daemon die or like, this is amazing because you could just say like, okay, send it to Nagios and then, uh, and then have Nagios send an email or whatever. So you'll know as soon as that stuff happens. It's like, oh, you know, uh, Daemon died. Like, bam, send, send off the NSEA and you're good. Or cron started, you have a cron that starts at a certain time. Hey, cron started, send it off. Right, uh, we have a, uh, it, like I notify the daemon, like so it sits there and watches it and the whole thing breaks if I notify breaks, right? So I have a, an RPE that sits there and says like, hey, check, I no make sure I notify is up on, on my stuff, right? So if you're not using something like this, I highly recommend it. Um, just for monitoring, it makes your life so much easier. Uh, MySQL, basically, uh, I store my hashes in there, and I'll go into my hashes a little bit later. Um, but, yeah. All right. So, um, so I took care of my central monitoring, um, and I'm going to go into alerting. Uh, has anybody used Swatch? Simple Watcher? Anybody heard of it? No? OK. Uh, Basically, Swatch can, can watch your log files. Um, and it can, it can send out an email. Um, like, so it's, it's regex, and it says, like, hey, this thing came in on my log file. And, uh, and, then, and then I'm going to do something depending on what came in. So you just set up some rules. Um, so you can have it send out an email. Uh, if it, you can also you can have it. Um, you have to set up a command line terminal and, and uh, like have it sitting up on a screen somewhere and watching it. And uh, I don't think you're allowed to use the terminal while it's working. <laughs> but uh, if you have it on like run live, you can make it like beep and flash and like just go crazy if something happens in your log file that you don't want to happen. So hey, I don't know. That's cool. We 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 don't do that. We use Nagios. We just look for a run live. <laughs> uh, so, so we got some alerting going on, we get emails, um, and the next thing is automation. Um, so, so we have the crons that you can run, you can tell it to like make a, make a database file every now and then. Um, that's about all you could do with cron on aid, and that's not good enough for me. Um, so we use uh, expect and auto expect. Who's used those? Okay, this guy over here was like, uh, did you do my project with me? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, expect and auto expect are really cool. Uh, they're basically like bash scripts that work from stuff that comes in on your command line. So you can start up a like cron job that says run an expect script, and that expect script says like uh, send this file over to this treated thing through SFTP, you know, and then send an NSCA. Or, you know, uh, take this file and modify it a little bit because that we have to do that. Um, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, Nagios, we have the DB that helps us cut out the vast majority of our checks. So, um, database. We, I'm going to go over that a little bit more late later, but um, basically. Using, using a database helps us in our automation by storing values and letting other programs access the database. Um, but, all right. So my next goal is speed. Um, so think about it. If you have a, a machine that needs to initialize a database using whatever hash you want to use, so say you're using a larger hash or algorithm, um, or you're, you're, you have a large amount of files that you're, that you're trying to monitor. Um, 
you're, you're making this database file off of all that, and then you're creating the hash on all that stuff, and then you're storing it, and then you're doing it again, and then you're comparing these two hashes, right? That's a lot of work. That's, that takes a long time for your systems to do. So the best thing to do is to make hash your hash. If you, take a, if you take your database file and you make a small hash out of that, right, and you check that first. So you say, here's my original hash and here's this hash. It's not perfect, but it cuts out the majority of the work because all you say is, uh, if, if these two still match, it's great. Throw it out. I don't care, right? If they don't anymore, now we want to go in and see what happened with all the files and we want to see all the good stuff. But why, why sit there and run um, th this huge comparison um, if you don't need to? So you just do a hash on the hash, compare those two hashes, and if they're different, then you work. Um, so um, so you make, you make a, ma a dedicated machine, do the heavy lifting. You don't want your, your web servers or your databases or something doing that. So if you'd have like one of your security machines dedicated to, to receiving aid files. That's my boss, right? Receiving aid files from my minions and, and doing stuff with them and making checks. And then if something's wrong, generating a report. You know, you don't want every single one of your machines doing that. So um, I'll, I'll um, you want to implement your FIM to do the least amount of work possible. So run run the initialization or run the run the check, create the database file, and send it off, and that's it, right? Um, so and then so in order to do this, basically uh, we just have uh, PHP look. We'll, Look for files, grab the file, create a hash on the hash, throw it in a database, uh, check the database because you have like an approved hash in the database. So I'll show this. It's really simple databasing stuff. Um, so we'll have some approved hashes like that. It's just a tiny hash made of the big database file, right, um, for your systems. And then you'll have some checks. Um, so you say, hey, I got a received hash at this time. You know, does it does it match my old approved hash that I have set up? You know, um, any you know, it's just the stuff that doesn't matter too much. All right. So uh, basically, any language will do. You're just hashing the hash, uh, storing it, running a check against the hashed hash, um, and then and then if those two hashes don't match up. Um, Set out an alert so you can go in there and, and check those two files. So you, that means that you only ever have to do them when something happens, when somebody made a change to production when they weren't supposed to, or somebody's hacking you. Basically, that's it. Uh, security. Um, aid, aid, and I think FIMS in general are very easily defeated. You're creating. And an, an initialized file, like a snapshot of something that you say, I'm, this is good, right, that I'm going to check against. And then you're <laughs> creating another one, um, and, and it's just a command, like aid in it, like make that initial file. So what's stopping a hacker from going in there and just saying aid in it? I just did all my bad stuff, aid in it. You know? <laughs> so, so they just overwrote your file, and, and you would never know. So, so you have to recognize the key is that database file, that initial database file, like your approved database file, the one that you say is, is what I, the, the current state of my system that I approve of, right? Um, and then you remove the key. You don't want that key sitting where it's accessible. So you put that key on a different, on a security machine, you know, somewhere where it's locked down. Um, and then, uh, so uh, the, your cron frequency is uh, basically the faster you can afford to, to make a database file. Like if you can do it every five minutes, I'd recommend it because that literally means if you have it set up the way I do, they, that anybody that is in your machine hacking you has five minutes before you know, right? If they're if they're messing with binaries or any any uh, monitor files, you will know in five minutes. 
you know, we have it set up in, uh, for 30 minutes. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 more, the more often you can run that file, send it off, do a check on the hash, and, and you know, the, the less time they have. Uh, you can also be evil. Uh, that, that A to NIT file is, uh, is like the key, right? So why not leave an old dumb A to NIT file there, but make it into a honeypot? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so anybody attacking you knows anything about A, the first thing they're going to go for is that, that initial database file. They're going to look at that. And uh, it could be a honeypot that just like, uh, I don't know, shuts down your, your internet connection on the machine. Whatever. You know, maybe you don't want to do that. But, uh, or the, the simplest honeypot, the one I have in place, it sends an NXCA, not you know, some pisses off swatch. Um, <laughs> so as soon as somebody touches that file, I know because because that initial file is just sitting there. My, my real initial file is on a separate machine. So, um, and all this doesn't matter if you don't monitor or you ignore your security emails. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to go into some actual setup stuff and all that. Um, that was just basically my whole spill about using open source and, and, and getting things to work for you, finding new tools. I'm sure. Everybody's kind of gone through this. But if you haven't, you should. You should um, just try to put something together using stuff that's already there. It's cool. You'll learn a lot, and you'll find tons of tools that help you everywhere else. Um, if if you want more specifics, like uh, code to help you know hash your hashes or to you know send stuff off or whatever, I can give you that. Um, but I would hope that you would just try to do it yourself first. You know, because you'll learn a lot on the way. Um, we'll go into that later. Yes. How long do I have? 20 minutes? Uh, looks like you've got about 25 minutes. Okay. Where am I at? Okay. All right. So this is my minion machine. Uh, this is my minion machine. So uh, basically, this is going to have uh, Nagios installed on it, but uh, at the bare minimum, just just to be able to know how to send an SCA and an RP to report to my central Nagios machine. I have my central Nagios machine here, and I have my boss machine. So this is like a minion. This would be like a database machine or a web server or something, something that does some work. Could you blow the text up a little bit? Um, yeah, how do you do that in Putty? You go to yeah. like the title bar. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe you can go to options or change, change settings. settings up to call it. Change settings. Yeah, then you can go to appearance. Window appearance, I believe. Change font size. Yeah, that's it. So it's like the CC. Okay. Uh, let me just do that on everything. Real fast. Hard to get. <laughs> so this this has uh, this has uh, Nagios installed on it. Uh, that's the, the, I don't know, the least capacity you can possibly have it for to report. Um, and uh, it's, got, it's got a couple of my scripts, my expect <coughs> scripts, that are uh, going to go and, and do do my work for me. Um, it's got like column stuff. So let me, let me go into A first of all. So um, So there's a by ADB new file. Um, so so this is this is it creating a initial file. Um, now it takes a long time, but um, I have it set up so it's doing like the bare minimum right now. My config file is literally like saying do almost nothing. <laughs> so it shouldn't take that long. 
Um, and when you're setting stuff up, I recommend you to do that when you're doing demonstrations. Um, just so so you're not waiting when you're when you're setting up your stuff and messing around and learning. You're not waiting all the time for these huge long uh, directory file system checks and hashes. <laughs> You know, so I say like SHA-1 on two files, it'll take that long. <laughs> Still a long time. Uh, so there it is, it says, hey, I created the database at there, right? Um, so here's my new database. Uh, and then, let me see. It's gonna look like pretty much gibberish. Because these are like shot out stuff. Oh. All right. Yeah. And that's that's a small one. Um so this machine, sorry, I had I had this all set up to like go to to do the whole thing and then I was just gonna go in there and touch a file and show everything flip out. But um my you know how demonstrations go. They never they never go. So <laughs> Uh, yeah, didn't work. Sorry. So uh, this will send the. Uh, so that creates a file, initializes the file, then I'll have a. So. All right. So I have my expect scripts. Uh, and uh, I'll just talk about. Expect and auto expect a little bit more. Auto expect is awesome um, because you can say uh, basically it's like a macro. You can you can say run auto expect. Just say I'm not, I've created a script um, and then it, actually no, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Uh, so it started. I'm making a script. So then I can say like cd root. Um, ls cd dot dot. Um, let's go to the home. And then, so let's end it. So the script is ended. And there's my script, and then I can do expect. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh. It's pretty cool, right? I just uh, pretty much did a bunch of jump, how to record it, and ran it. Uh, so it's like a macro. Really, really easy macro. Uh, so we use the auto expect scripts. There we go. So I have my scripts that go in there and say uh, create a database file, you know, do aid in it, um, and then send it, uh, log in via SFTP into the treated account, put the file there. Uh, log out and go on about your business, you're done. I'll send off an NCAP and saying I did that. And then you're done. Right? So that's pretty much what auto expect is there for. Works really well. Um, so the cron is what kicks off the whole process. It just basically says um, every 30 minutes, uh, Go run the script, the expect script. And that's that's all that the uh, that the machine needs to do. Your minion machine needs to do. Um, boss. Uh, basically, I use PHP and Code Igniter to do a lot of this stuff, and I hardly use Code Igniter at this point. <laughs> this is when I was like first starting some PHP. Uh, so. Basically, you're going to have these uh, these like things like I notify Damon, I know I, I notify down, I notify up. These are these are all things that get sent 
off. So these are like little, uh, let's see. They're just these little, these little messages. This is what, what Nagios, this is Nagios' uh, syntax. Um, this is, so it says, hey, send this to, to 1.1.72, one which is Nagios machine. It says, uh, listed as an I notify status. Give it a color and say I notify is down. Uh, <clears throat> so on, on uh, Nagios, you set up, you say minion one, send in uh, an I notify check. Is I notify running, right? Um, so then it's going to, this is the status. I think a zero is uh, green, a one is yellow, and a two is red, which is bad. Uh, and then, uh, so basically, you're saying, as far as an NRP goes for Nagios, Nagios is going to say, hey machine, tell me what's up with I notify. And the machine is going to say, hey, what's up? Like, check itself. Yeah, I notify is good. Pick up the I notify script, that little, that little message, and send it back to Nagios. And then Nagios is going to display it on the screen for you. Right? And you set up all your services and stuff to, uh, you know, you can, you can say these checks happen every two minutes or whatever. Um, So there's those scripts. Uh, basically, I have some scripts that um, that that set up my own I notify services. Um, that's my watcher on PHP. Um, so basically, like if you turn the machine on, you just you just kind of like run your PHP watcher on PHP, and, and you're good to go. You know. Uh, so yeah. Um, this, these scripts also will hash the hash. They'll go in there and say, um, I notify just told me that a file appeared in this true to directory. Um, now go in there, make a hash of that file that appeared, compare the hash to the, the approved hash in the database. If the um, approved hash is um, the same, trash that file. I don't need any more. It's fine. Send a message to Nagios that says it's fine, right? Um, then the other case would be, hey, I received a file. The the approved hash in my database doesn't make, match the hash I just made. Um, keep that file. Put it put it in a location that um, so so you can go check it and send a, a message to Nagios that the the file is bad, that something went wrong. And then you can go in there and manually check um, the, the approved file, your approved database, with the one that just came in that, that got flagged as being bad. Right? Um, so I have like an incoming, and I think this is my, my true directory, where they go and drop the files. Um, So, so these are my, my database files that have come in. Uh, I also have it rename it to the to the timestamp, just so I know. And uh, I mark it down in my database as a failed check with the timestamp, so I know uh, some some data redundancy there. Um, so basically, now I have I have my my failed file. I'll have my approved file somewhere else, right? And then I can move my file over and do a do a check against both of them, and uh, then I'll know exactly what went wrong, what happened, why my hash was flagged as being bad, right? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, the, the other thing is, is my Nagios machine. Um, Nagios, I feel, is a little out of scope for this. Uh, you, it's, um, it's complicated, but it's... Uh, Useful. So I might go over some of it. Um, basically, let's see. So you're going to set up your your servers in Nagios. Uh, 
So you just like create a config file for each of them? Um, you define services. So this is where you say like, hey, uh, this is this is my check. You know, um, the C check CPU lo CPU load is in an RPE check, and and uh, then Nagios is going to know what to do with it. Um, so so you could define all sorts of services. You can do all sorts of stuff. There is like tons of stuff you can do. Uh, Somewhere in the Nagios directory, there is uh, is is like a ton of these uh, these things that say like uh, NRP check config or NRP uh, you know send send active users. Uh, there's there's just tons of them that are just already pre-built that you can use, or you can build your own. You can define your own uh, based off of these old ones that are made. Um, so there's that. Um, I, yeah, I don't want to go into it too much more. Uh, I highly suggest you use Nagios or something like that. Um, questions? Can you go over, uh, I'm totally new to the BIM thing, but mm -hmm. that especially is, but can you kind of go over what the process flow is of dealing with uh, valid changes? Like, okay, I'm going to lay down a new package. Um, that's going to change this configuration, but we intend it to be that way. You know, mm -hmm. what, what do I have to do for in A to make sure that the next, we, we, you know, errors don't start flying up all over the place and we're getting calls and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. So what I what I would do is uh, is you just basically put probably put your crons on hold, so so nothing's happening. Uh, make your change to production or whatever, um, and then you just reinitialize. Uh, Send that initialized file off to wherever you want to keep it, your secure location. Um, create a hash on that, and then store that hash in the database. Then turn your stuff back on. You're good. When you're reinitializing, make sure that you compare your files that only the ones you expected to change mm -hmm. actually change. Yeah, you could do that. You could reinitialize and and, uh, and even do a comparison and see that. Otherwise, uh, they might sneak who, something. Yeah, your guy, your guy doing production. That's about to get fired. Just you know, just did something bad. You can you can check and see that stuff. It's cool. Any other questions? It's kind of a lot. I don't know. It's um, and I'm scatterbrained, so kind of How all over the handle, place. How do you handle Nagios is your main reporting system? Mm -hmm. How do you handle if that is the box that gets hacked if they turn off those reports? I just hope not. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, um, so so so. We, we have it in um, a more secure environment. You have it behind DMZ and all that stuff. Um, so so it's less susceptible, but it's the nature of security. There's something that's... Set up all, a second modules box, and all it does... I guess you could do that, first. yeah. They monitor each mm -hmm. other. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I should probably do that, actually. I was just going to handle... Um, because I, I presume this is the A config where you can handle uh, files that you expect to change, like rotation oh, okay. files and stuff like Actually, that. Yeah, I should. I really should have gone over that. I have a config file. Uh, I just kind of like didn't hear anything. Uh, so here's like an example A configuration file. Um, Basically, what you're going to do is so here's here's your algorithms. Um, you can you can create your own algorithms by saying here's my algorithm and uh, and then uh, chain chain these ones together, right? So you can do extra. You can take any anything you've defined before and use it to define so basic programming, uh, right? 
Um, so, so normal is pretty good. It's like a, a shock to 56 with a R, which I believe is all of this stuff. So if you go look up at like these uh, permissions, I know, so you're checking these, uh, these file attributes, right? Um, and you're using a SHA-256 to hash it. Um, basically, so then here's where you decide what directories you want to use. So you just say like, so these are like de definitely recommended, um, like your binary ones. Um, and then, so if you have something that's too volatile, you can tell it to not check. So it's just a little exclamation point in front of that directory. Um, you can also set up um, I think down there here they have the like, yeah, this LSSP rule, uh, which is pretty much stuff that uh, that like creates audit uh, records or stuff that you know will change often. Um, so those you can you can tell you can just like loosen the rules on it and say like I just want to know when somebody like changes the directory, like the name of the directory or um, adds a directory or something like that. You can you can just check some minimal stuff. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just, well, I've just spent many months diving into Samhain and Yule and all that. Mm -hmm. I just was curious how, how Abe handled that. How so Abe did. I haven't spent any much. set it. ones up for logs, too, so yeah. they'll, they'll let it grow, but not, not change. Yeah, but not change. But, yeah, the and main, that's, that's, yeah. the, that's the big thing that PCI. I've well, spent yeah. many weeks in between other things fine tuning that because. This box will have Tomcat, so I have to specify Tomcat logs are okay. And, and yeah, it, it takes. So uh, yeah, was that your experience as well? It's yeah, yeah. Logs. Basically, you go in there. Um, what I did is I is I set up a file that worked pretty well with everything. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, and then I knew some specifics on some machines, mm -hmm. and I added those in. And then if something were you know just not working on the file that worked pretty well, I would either take it off or loosen the rules. And so you just do that on each machine, but you want to get like a base configuration yeah. that works decently with everything then you go across. I presume your auditor allowed because you're taking your database and transferring it to a different machine, and so it's off that machine, and then that satisfies the PCI guys or the, the auditor guys that because as I read that they don't PCI, they don't really care in PCI. They're like it's like they they look at that requirement and they say is that is that log file being washed with the yeah, and if it, even if even if that database file is like insecure, they're like, yep, that's good. Yeah. What you I'm know? getting at is, is the rule says you have to have the database on a central server for all your servers. Mm -hmm. They were specific about that. Yeah, 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 I did want you. Yep. So that's, that's how you solve that, which is transferring stuff over daily. Yeah, yeah. So transfer it over then, and then I highly recommend that you do a hash on the hash and draw, because those files can be big. They like I think some are like thirty. 30 megabytes or something. So if you if you you know if you have that running every 30 minutes, uh, 20 machines, you, you can fill up your server in a couple days. You know, so <laughs> uh, so you if you if you do a hash on the hash and you say like, hey, this this these this file that just came in checks out, it's fine. Delete it. Why why you why would you keep it around if it doesn't check out with what you have approved? Then then I would keep it and check out. Do we use anything uh, similar to this? Like I, for some of our environments, we use uh, start using CXS by Jervy for the exploit scanning and mail that. Uh -huh. scanning for exploits, like if we think something may be compromised already, we'll use that. But have you used anything similar or? No, uh, I no. <laughs> so I don't know. This is just uh, mostly fims and hardening. Your fim and making sure it works. And, uh, yeah. So. I've used Logwatch in the past. Why a versus Logwatch? Um, or not Logwatch. Uh, Tripwire. Sorry. Tripwire. So is Tripwire like Swatch or? Uh, Tripwire will do your file monitoring. Oh, will do your fire. But yeah, uh, I think, I think we we ended up doing aid because we, um, the ones that we looked at. I don't. I haven't even heard of Tripwire. There's tons of these fins out there, and uh, and when you go to look for one, it's it's like crazy. There's just so many. Um, so I, I can't say why one over the other. All the only reason why we chose Aid is because we couldn't find one that was inherently working with Nagios, and uh, we wanted we wanted to to be able to we wanted it to do its task well 
and build around that and, uh, and be simple so that we can build around it easily rather than having all this other chum that we have to either try to make it work or it's just taking up extra space or yada yada yada. So, um, I mean, if, if, there's, if there's one out there that has some features that you want to use and, and, and they don't conflict with what you want to build around it, then I'd say go for it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying you have to use A, but yeah. Any other questions? About three minutes. Okay, cool. That's that.